Brooklyn live and direct Haribo what's good everybody yeah I'm here over here on Franklin Ave chilling you know taking in the sun enjoying my little day or whatever today happens to be Codice and it happens to be a very beautiful day putting the map so I figured let me do a video about a subject that affects a lot of people's lives what affects our lives attraction people are more concerned with things that they're attracted to and one thing I find that people are very attracted to is beauty I was on the subway platform the other day here's my man ODB oh dirty bastard boy is I seen so many tourists coming over here taking pictures in front of old dirty bastard you know a lot of Asian people coming out here now bed -Stuy is definitely changing so there's a lot of tourism going on in New York they're attracted to the beauty the nightlife the energy of New York but man I saw this Ethiopian lady on the on the subway the other day right you know she was standing with her Ethiopian dude and I noticed that she was particularly attractive I was like man you know there's beautiful women all over Africa man but this something nice about them Ethiopian women you know and, and don't tell me oh they're they're mixed with Europeans so they're beautiful actually they're a pure seed of African they're one of the pure the last pure seeds left of Africans because they're very um they stick to their own so I said man this Ethiopian lady you know she got beautiful hair beautiful face beautiful skin her physique was nice too you know I was like everything was really nice and I was like wow beauty is a very interesting thing because in the Vedic system what they teach about beauty is that pretty much when you're born as a beautiful person when you have nice physical characteristics that means that in a prior life you had attained some punya you did some good deeds you did something good that made you born become born in a beautiful body so when a person is very physically attractive that's a sign that they did something right in a past life and when a person is born in not so physically favorable situations that's a sign that they were pretty much ugly in their past life so when you hear this sign this saying God don't like ugly it's true because if you live an ugly lifestyle then you're going to attract an ugly your subtle body becomes ugly and then the body that forms around that subtle body also has unfavorable characteristics now let's speak about the biological implications of beauty first of all scientists have determined that symmetry or symmetrical features meaning the left side of your face is balanced with the right side of your face generally those people are considered to be more beautiful than asymmetrical people however my only concern with that is well what if both halves of your face is ugly but they're symmetrical does that mean that you're symmetrically beautiful or symmetrically ugly so once again it doesn't matter the two halves of your face still got to be looking good if you want to be considered beautiful so I don't think I don't boil down beauty to symmetry because beauty is truly in the eyes of the beholder some guys like women who have flat bodies a flat rear end small small breasts whereas other men prefer their women to be more voluptuous more thick like there's a lot of people who believe that Serena Williams and Venus Williams they're too masculine because they're muscular but meanwhile on the other end of the spectrum there are people that will say that a woman is beautiful if she has small hips and a small buttocks in other words if she has the body of a 12 year old boy she's considered beautiful to some so I don't accept anybody's standards of beauty I just go for what I'm attracted to but beauty is very interesting because it's a double-edged sword it could work in your favor or it could work against you there are some people who are born in their beautiful bodies and realize that their beauty is not going to last forever it's a temporary circumstance beauty fades like around 40 50 some people like Cicely Tyson she's like a freak of nature she's like 90 she looks like she's 60 or maybe in her late 50s 
extremely beautiful. I've been seeing a lot of pictures on Facebook of a lot of older, especially black women, who they just don't seem to age. The hands of time just forgot about these ladies. But as it is, generally, beauty is going to fade. And while you do have beauty, it's good to use your beauty to attract people to a noble cause or a noble person, like the supreme person, Sri Krishna. So you're endowed with this beauty, use it to attract people to Krishna. If they're attracted to you, let them know the real science. First of all, Bhagawan. In order to be considered God, I remember ODB, he was at an Arsenio Hall show right before it got shut down. And he was screaming, the black man is God. 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 That's cool. If you want to say the black man is part and parcel of Krishna, then yes, he is God. And so is the ant. And so is the, the watermelon. And so is the canary in the tree. All of us on the soul level are part and parcel of God. But when it comes to our beauty, we have to understand that the possessor of all beauty, the origin, the source of all beauty is Bhagawan. Bhagawan or Bhagavan means, basically it means he who possesses all opulence in full. So if somebody says that they are God, if they mean the Supreme Lord of the universe, all you got to do is ask them, do they have any of the six attributes? The six attributes are wisdom, strength, beauty, riches, reputation, and renunciation. There are some people who are renounced, but Krishna has unlimited renunciation. He could be on the scene and be all up in your business and have his pastimes right there in your nation, in your land, in your tribe and village. And you could show him all of the hate in the world or you could show him all the love in the world. But regardless of if you're loving him or hating him, there's a time when he has to leave you so he could continue his pastimes in another universe. So he has renunciation. He can renounce, he can leave all things behind in the drop of a moment. They also say the same thing about Eshu, Alegbara. Eshu is the deity of the crossroads. He's the messenger of the gods. And they say that with his loving hands, he can lift you up and pick you up to the highest heights. And with those same hands, Eshu Alegbara can drop you and let you fall. So that's a form of renunciation as well. Non-attachment. So nobody's more renounced than Krishna. Nobody's more rich than Krishna. Because everybody would think that if I can make gold, if I could use a Chintamani gem, or if I could drink mercury under a certain moon phase, and then urinate it out in the morning over copper, that it will become gold, they will look at me as God. However, I will look at the person who created the mine full of gold to be the God. So Krishna is a possessor of wealth because all diamonds come from him. Everything that we identify with wealth or riches is coming from Krishna. So nobody's more rich than Krishna. Nobody's wiser than Krishna. Why? Because he's described as Satchit Ananda. That chit means potency of cognizance. It means potency of knowledge. He is composed of pure knowledge. Absolute unlimited knowledge is what Krishna is one third of his spiritual component. Absolute unlimited knowledge. So nobody has more knowledge than Krishna. He's the source of all knowledge. Reputation. There are some people that's famous in my hood. There was a dude named Kayvon, as a matter of fact. To this day, he's still famous. He was a well-known drug dealer. He got he died in the game. He was a soldier of the streets. You died how you live. So Kayvon is well known in my neighborhood. And then you got people like Pappy Mason, Fat Cat. Those are also other drug people that are well known throughout the borough of Queens. Then you got people that's known throughout the entire New York City. Like Jay-Z, he's a rapper. He's known, he has fame throughout New York City. Matter of fact, Jay-Z is famous throughout this country and throughout all seven continents. I bet you some of them scientists in Antarctica at the research station right now is bumping some of Jay-Z's tracks. So we have a planetary figure in Jay-Z. He's famous all over. Jesus, he's famous all over the planet. Martin Luther King, famous. Gandhi, famous all over the planet. Cool. They have fame. But Bhagawan Krishna 
is known throughout all planetary systems on every planet. Yes, there is life on every planet. He's known throughout all planets, planetary systems, galaxies. He's known throughout this entire universe and he's even known in the other universes that exist. This is Bhagawan, unlimited reputation. That's beautiful to be famous everywhere. So that's Krishna, he's the source of all fame. As a matter of fact, with just one small portion of his energy, he's sustaining all of these limitless universes. So we already touched knowledge, we touched fame, we touched reputation already. Let's talk about strength. Listen, man, even the demigods, the king of the demigods, Shango, also known as Indra, king of the demigods couldn't even beat Krishna. He had a straight up fight with him and he lost to Krishna. But even without that fight, there was an incident where Krishna held up a hill on his left pinky finger. The pinky finger of his weak hand, he held it up a hill over his head for seven days because Indra was sending down rains trying to destroy the village of Vrindavan. So Krishna's business wasn't even to whoop Indra's butt. It was more to protect his loving devotees. But he was showing the demigods that even the king of the demigods can't even mess with my little pinky finger. So that's the strength. Krishna was known as a demon slayer. He was slaying demons while he was in the cradle. While he was still sucking breast milk, he was killing demons. He killed demons in humanoid forms, demons who came in the form of a bull. His brother killed a demon that came in the form of an ass or a donkey or a horse. Like this was normal stuff, like how I go out and play basketball. This is how Krishna was killing demons. So a person to be God has to display these six attributes in unlimited potency. What about beauty? Krishna is so beautiful. It is said that Krishna's beauty attracts all living entities, male and female, beginning with himself. You got to be good looking to be attracted to yourself. That's very, very attractive. They, listen. They got sages right now, right? There's sages that's lined up. Trillions and trillions and innumerable amount of living entities are lined up doing penances and austerities. They're standing on one toe for 10,000 years with both hands pointed to the, to the sky just to catch a glimpse of Krishna's feet. So we're understanding that just his feet alone is enough to give liberation to the living entities. So that's why in the Vedic system, all respects are paid to the feet first. We don't approach Krishna and look him directly in the eye. When he's in the temple, we go, we absorb the deity. We drink the deity in with our eyeballs from the feet because feet is the chamber of respect. And then we look up through his calves, his legs, thighs, waist, belly button, chest, arms, his clothes, the paraphernalia that he's holding, then we finally get to the eyes. And they even describe his eyes as being like lotus flowers. Skin is black, it's very dark, beautiful hue. Krishna is the source of all beauty. Whatever beauty you see in a woman or a man out there, it all originated in Krishna. And that's why you can't really say God is a he because he is a he. Krishna is the energetic. Radha or Hare is the energy. So Krishna is the possessor, the container of all of the energy in the universe. He is the possessor or container of all of the beauty in the universe and wisdom and strength and fame and riches and renunciation. He is the container. He is the possessor. He is the patni. He is the, um, the husband. Cupid himself is defeated by the beauty of Krishna. We know Cupid has a strong effect on the affairs of man because Cupid could shoot you with those arrows and you'll fall in love with the strangest person. People who are not good for your mental, physical, intellectual, or spiritual health. And you'll fall in love with those people. You'll marry those people because of Cupid's influence. But Cupid himself is defeated by the beauty of Krishna. As a matter of fact, it said that Krishna is more beautiful 
than hundreds of thousands of Cupids combined. Matter of fact, all of the goddesses of fortune, all of the Lakshmis in the universe are clamoring to serve Krishna. Clamoring. There's a crowd around him at all times. There's nothing I could give Krishna. Me personally, I don't own anything that could take him away from getting a massage from Lakshmi. There's nothing I could give him. Only way you could trap Krishna is through pure, loving, devotional service. Also known as Bhakti Yoga, and in Egypt it was known as Kemet Sma Tawi. We have to bind this material reality to the spiritual, original reality. If you want to preserve your beauty, it is best to engage in Bhakti Yoga. Because when a person cleans the temple or decorates the deity, you're actually cleansing your heart, you're decorating not only the temple, but you're decorating your internal body. So what happens is when you leave this material body, you'll be able to tell who's been doing some serious devotional service because you'll see the beauty in their futures. Features. The more beautiful activities we do in this material world in relationship to Krishna, the more it enhances our spiritual beauty. Now, what's on the inside of a container eventually makes its way to the outside of a container. So if you're becoming more attractive internally or spiritually, yes, naturally you will become more attractive physically. So although this beauty can be a double-edged sword in material affairs, sometimes a woman's too beautiful. She intimidates men. Matter of fact, most of the single women are the most beautiful women because men are afraid to holler at beautiful women. Uh, their own inadequacies, their own insecurities come to the forefront. This girl look too good. She's high maintenance. I only make $13 an hour. There's no way I could support this woman. That's how a man would think. I only make $20 an hour. She deserved $25. She deserved $35 an hour. I can't do it. Oh, she's too beautiful. I'm gonna have to be fighting everybody all day because look at her, her, th her thighs. Look at her waist. Look, you know what I'm saying? All of the beauty that comes with a woman, it comes with equal trouble. <laughs> so it's a double-edged sword. But if that beauty is used for Krishna's service, it becomes transcendental. Also, once again, chanting Hare Krishna slows down the aging process. I'm not saying this because I'm a sentimentalist. I believe in philosophy just as much as I believe in spirit. And when they did a test in the laboratory, they found that chanting Hare Krishna reduces the stress hormones and the aging hormones. And the sixth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam shows you in detail how time itself is afraid of the devotees of Krishna. Time doesn't have any jurisdiction over Krishna's devotees, neither does the Lord of Death. Beauty. Beauty is beautiful, but if it's shallow, then it means nothing. We will change these bodies. If you want to have eternal beauty that never fades, then what you need to do is address the real problems of life. An Aryan will address the real issues of life because an Aryan knows the value of human life. The value of human life is self-realization. The disease that must be stopped is not the loss of beauty or the loss of health. The real disease that must be stopped is the transmigration from body to body to body. No matter how powerful you are, no matter how beautiful you are, no matter where you live, you will be kicked out of that position sooner or later. You're going to be kicked out and there's nothing you could do about it. The most mighty man or the most weakest man, from the mouse to the elephant, everybody's gonna be kicked out of their position. So you wanna stop the transmigration of bodies so that you can go back to your original eternal position. And I wanna reiterate, God is not without form, God has absolute form. How do I know this? Because my father has a form and my mother has a form and they have parents that have a form. So if you keep following all of the parents of everybody in the universe, you're gonna tell me that once we get back to God, there's no longer any form. We had form all along, but now we go into the original supreme source. So you're telling me I got something that God doesn't have? Well, God is less than me then. But no, I don't go by that philosophy. That's called Mayavad philosophy, Maya wisdom. The wisdom of Maya tells you that God has no form because people cannot perceive God with their present blunt senses. Human beings, you don't even know what beauty is. Let's keep it 100% real. 
Your existence is so limited, it's not even funny. Have you ever been on an airplane and seen how small human beings really are? Do you think that we're much, really, really much better than the bacteria? Bacteria can only see but so far. Humans can only see but so far. You got people thinking that the earth is so flat. They're thinking the earth is flat because their vision is limited. You can only maybe see 20 miles on a clear day. So how are you going to tell me the earth is flat if you've never seen the circumference of the entire planet with your naked eye? You know, light rays are very funny. You can only see seven colors, yet there's 100,000 colors coming off of the sun, but you can only see seven. What the hell are you seeing and how are you God? You ain't seeing nothing. You're not even seeing part of reality. We don't know what beauty is. We can't describe anything beyond seven colors. Let's keep it real. Your hearing is a certain decibel range. Your dog could hear things that you can't hear. Your dog can smell things that you can't smell. Matter of fact, a bee, a bee knows what flowers to pick and what fruits are ripe by the ultraviolet colors that are coming off of it. So your sight, you don't even see beauty for what it really is. And if you really saw what material beauty is, you would abandon it right away. Because material beauty is just based upon the distribution of liquids and lipids in the human body. A fat chubby person, a fat chubby cute lady, a fat chubby baby is only fat and chubby because they have a nice amount of fat and liquid in their body. But as soon as you get old and it starts drying up, your teeth start dropping out, nobody want nothing to do with you no more. You understand? So material beauty truly is only skin deep. Because if you burn that top layer of skin off of a human being, none of it is pretty. The muscle structure, not pretty. It's not attractive. Skeletal structure is not attractive. Beauty is only skin deep. But what you do in this life will determine what kind of beautiful body or ugly body you get in your next life. So, I'm just here to admonish you, to remind you, stay beautiful. Stay beautiful from a spiritual platform, not even a mental platform, not even an intellectual platform, because these things are subject to change once you give up this gross body. But the spiritual beauty is always going to shine through. If you could look at your past lives and look at the different bodies you've been given, a person who generally remains in the mode of goodness or sattva gunna, they generally get a beautiful physical form. So you can look at all of your past lives. If you're a beautiful person in this life and you're accustomed to doing beautiful deeds or deeds in the mode of sattva, then more than likely you have a long line of beautiful bodies behind you. <laughs> Matter of fact, I had mentioned this in another video, but I think I should reiterate that of all of the reincarnations you've had since you've been in this universe, they said you could stack up each body one on top of the other and it would stretch 93 million miles all the way to the sun. So you've been here a long time. Don't get enamored by temporary beauty. Try to see the inner person. That's where the real beauty lies at. But yes, it is possible to live eternally in one original spiritual body. And when you get that body back, you're not giving it up. Man, let me tell you something. In the upper planetary systems, the women are very, very beautiful. They got a group of women that are beautiful called Apsaras, and they are heavenly entertainers. They, they do music, dance, and sex acts for, for their customers, for the people who they serve. They're called Apsaras. But in the spiritual world, the first level of the spiritual world is actually the Brahma Jyoti. That is what the Buddhists call Nirvana. Nirvana means without the forest. Nirvana means many things, without the jungle or out of the jungle. And of course, this material world is a jungle. So once you get your mind up out of this material jungle, you go to a place called Nirvana. And everybody thinks that's the ultimate goal. Let me tell you what Nirvana is. Nirvana is like being in a room where everything is glowing, including yourself. But guess what? There's nobody to interact with, nobody to talk to, nobody to make love with. Nobody to fight with, nobody to eat with, nobody to cry with. It is a very boring existence. You just become a firefly. That's the Brahma Jyoti. That's the light that's coming off Krishna's body. And a lot of people want to go to that. If you believe God has no form and you make spiritual advancement in this life, then you go to the Brahma Jyoti. 
you stay there for a few trillion years, then you come back down to this Earth or Earth-like planet because you are craving interaction. You are craving for reciprocity. So that's why people come back down to the earthly planets from the Nirvana or Brahma Jyoti. And then there's another level that's higher than that called Vaikuntha, which means without anxiety. Now, there's a lot of descriptions of Vaikuntha. I don't have enough time to go into them. But one thing very interesting about Vaikuntha is there's no envy or jealousy there because everybody is pretty much in the same form, same bodily features as Lord Vishnu. The women are bad. The scriptures describe them as having small waists, wide hips, round buttocks, round breasts, beautiful face. Some of them got a complexion like lightning. There's just amazingly transcendental descriptions of the beauty of the women of Vaikuntha. And there's no lust there because everybody's so caught up in their love and service to Lord Vishnu that they don't even have time to lust for the opposite sex. So if you want to get to sex life, you got to go higher. You got to go up to Goloka Vrindavan where everybody's perpetually playing around 24 hours. That's all they do in Goloka. They play, they have fun, they sport. They do things in the bushes that we would say is naughty. Well, I'm naughty by nature if that's the case. Anyway, right? <laughs> Goloka Vrindavan is where it's at. That's the highest spiritual abode. There's no need to mention the beauty of the residents of Goloka Vrindavan because there's no realm that can compare to Go Goloka Vrindavan. All right? That's the original Sakchit Ananda body. That's the real eternal form. Use your beauty wisely. wisely. Use it as a blessing and not as a curse. There's so many women that are so beautiful that got to go to bed lonely tonight because they are beautiful. There's so many women that are beautiful that are being scorned by people of the opposite sex or people of the same sex rather because they're beautiful and then there's another trap of beauty is when we rely on our beauty instead of relying on Krishna that is a very dangerous position because when you rely on beauty it fades look at your models the hottest models from the 80s I ain't gonna say no names because they're gonna think it's a personal attack some of them are still beautiful but not, in, not all of them are still as beautiful as they used to be what about the people in the porn industry? Serious, you know, I know it's an adult subject, but it's real. First you're beautiful, first you're Vanessa Del Rio, and then you become Vanessa Del Theo. So, you know, we just want to say that beauty is not going to last forever. You don't want to use beauty as the means to attain your security because you're going to become insecure after a certain amount of years. Look at your newscasters. They always get the pretty, hot, beautiful newscasters. But you could tell after 20 years behind that news desk, she's starting to fade and she's starting to get that look like, I wonder what my job security is looking like over the next five years. So please, don't base your blessings and don't base your security on things that's of a temporary nature. You will be disappointed. I would like for you to chant the Hare Krishna mantra. Go Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare why? Because, like an onion, it peels back the layers of contamination and dust that's covering over your soul. So as you chant Hare Krishna more and more, you will become more and more beautiful. I'm going to leave you with that. Enjoy your day. Stay beautiful. Haribo.